Okay, this project is based on Vincent van Gogh, or van Gogh, um, and we're going to be exploring this artist. This will be the first part of the project, and then we'll finish it up next week. So we wanted to explore this artist. Um, this is written and illustrated by Mike Venezia. Vincent van Gogh, sorry about the light. Vincent van Gogh is one of the most tragic artists that ever lived. Nothing ever seemed to go right um, for him and he wasn't very happy. He never even smiled in his self portraits. Van Gogh was born in Holland in 1853 and died in France in 1890. Unlike most artists, Van Gogh didn't decide to become a painter until he was grown up. He tried a lot of other things first. He worked in an art gallery selling paintings. He tried teaching. He worked in a bookstore and he was a preacher like his dad. None of these things made him very happy. Then one day he decided to be an artist. Van Gogh always tried his best at whatever he did. So he went to different art schools to learn everything he could about drawing and painting. His early drawings were of poor people he used to help when he was a preacher. There are certain things you can see in these drawings that show up later in his famous paintings, such as the strong lines and shapes you can see the feelings he had for everyday people. Van Gogh's first paintings were also of the poor people he had been helping. In this painting, um, this is called the Potato Eaters. And in this painting, the people were so poor that they had only a few potatoes to eat for dinner. They look tired and are not very happy. The colors in Van Gogh's early paintings are dark and sad. He wanted everyone to know how hard the lives of these poor people were. Van Gogh kept using some dark colors until he discovered some very colorful Japanese art work. He loved the bright colors and strong lines and the shapes that he saw. Soon Van Gogh's paintings started to look more and more colorful. Look at the difference between the gloomy potato eaters that you'd seen earlier and the, and the painting which was done only a few years later. We know a lot about how Van Gogh felt and why he did certain things because he was always writing letters to his younger brother, Theo. Theo always helped his brother. He encouraged him to paint and sent him money when he could. Because Van Gogh was always sending and receiving letters, he got to know his postman pretty well. He painted pictures of him and used the postman's wife as a model in many of his paintings as well. In 1886, Vincent moved to Paris, France to join Theo, his brother. Paris was the center of the art world then, and since Theo was in the business of buying and selling paintings and Vincent wanted to be an artist, it seemed like a pretty good place to be. Theo introduced Vincent to a lot of painters while they lived in Paris. Hardly anyone knew it then, but many of the painters would become world famous artists someday. As you can see, they're all getting to know each other. Um, he met artists like Toulouse Lautrec, Emile Bernard, Camille Passaro, Georges Seurat, Paul Signac, and Paul Gauguin. These are amazing artists that he's met. A couple of years later, Vincent van Gogh decided to leave Paris and move to a small country town called Arles. 
Van Gogh thought Arles would be the great place for artists to get together to paint and to talk about their different ideas. He tried very hard to get many artists as they could to join him. The only one to try it out was Paul Gauguin. Although he wasn't really crazy about the idea, it turned out to be a big mistake. Gauguin didn't seem to like anything Van Gogh did in Arles, and they argued a lot. Vincent Van Gogh probably decided to listen to Gauguin about cleaning the place up because his bedroom looks pretty neat in this painting that he did of his room. Finally, after a very bad argument, Gauguin decided to leave Van Gogh and return to Paris. Van Gogh didn't know what to do. He really wanted things to work out with Gauguin. But Van Gogh had always had problems during his life with the way he felt. Sometimes he would get so angry and upset that no one could make him feel better. This time he became so angry and upset he cut off part of his ear. Van Gogh painted pictures of himself after this happened. It looked like he wished he hadn't done it. Van Gogh never really got better after Gauguin left. Sometimes he was too angry to paint. And sometimes he was too sad to paint. When he felt good, he painted better than ever. He made the stars and the starry night seem like they're really shining. The trees in this painting look like flames and it feels like the whole picture is moving. In this painting, as you can see, Van Gogh made the sun look really hot and notice the paint technique that he used where he paint dashes of paint to give the painting movement. Uh, you almost feel like you should put sunglasses on when you look at this painting. Van Gogh usually put his paint on very thick. Sometimes he painted so fast he didn't even mix his colors. He used paint right out of the tube. Van Gogh used so much paint that he always was running out. And sometimes he stopped buying food in order to buy more paint. So he was hungry a lot of the time and he wasn't healthy. Hardly anyone was interested in Van Gogh's work while he was alive. And he sold only a few drawings and maybe one or two paintings. People in the 1800s and 1900s just weren't used to the bright moving pictures that Van Gogh made. Today, things are different. People have learned how beautiful Vincent van Gogh's art is. Now his paintings are some of the most popular in the world. This may have been van Gogh's last painting, and this one's called The Wheat Field with Crows, done in 1890. Some people think it shows how angry and upset he must have been feeling because he painted a scary sky. Um, roads that led to a dark background and crows that look like bats. Soon after this painting was finished, Van Gogh shot himself and he died two days later. Van Gogh made his painting seem alive with color. His colors are so bright and beautiful you can almost smell the flowers he painted or feel the bright sun. His brush strokes give everything a feeling of movement, trees, stars, and people feel alive. Maybe more than any other artist, Van Gogh's feelings came out in, this pain, in his paintings. That's why Vincent Van Gogh is one of the world's greatest artists. It's much better to see a real Vincent Van Gogh painting than the picture of one. It's how to see it's fun how to see how thick he put his paint on, his brush strokes and how bright his colors are. The pictures in this book came from the museums listed um, below. So um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be working on the, um, sorry about the lighting. My other light didn't last. <laughs> I have to order another one. So for this project, um, the iris 
and this is a couple of examples of Vincent van Gogh's iris um, painting. And this is just a smaller version of the painting. So we're going to be drawing an, an iris and we're going to be needing um, like a thick paper. I'm using a mixed media paper to do this. It's a thicker paper that can withhold um, watercolor paint. So we are gonna be using a few mediums for this. First of all, you're gonna need a rag because we're gonna be painting um, today. And this, remember, this is the part one of uh, the Iris series, and next week we'll be doing more to this um, project. So you're gonna need a Sharpie marker, um, eraser, paintbrush, pencil, uh, just today I'm going to be using some watercolors and then next week now I have a large box of oil pastels um, sorry about the lighting I'm trying to get this to work um, these pastels are Pentel and you can see that and um, I have the larger box series, but as you can see, there are 50 sticks in this. I think it's quite okay if you have um, a box of 12 or even 24. I've just happened to have this box for quite a while. So obviously, if you have um, the larger number, you have a lot more colors that you can be using. For this project so I'm all for um, larger uh, box pastels or watercolors because I like to have uh, variety but that's just me it doesn't it's not necessary so we're gonna do a line drawing of the iris and we're gonna be using um, you can use pencil first and then a Sharpie to outline it. So this is one example. This one is a single flower. And what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be doing this one with the single flower and the blossom. So um, we're gonna get started by doing a simple outline and I'll go slowly for you. So this is, um, what is this? This is a six by six, I believe. No, it has to be a little bigger. Of the um, mixed media paper. Um, no, it's, it's larger than that. But um, we're not gonna be doing a, a huge painting. So I just want you to, um, um, sorry about this. I just want you to have a large enough picture uh, or a, a water paper, sorry. Um, this light is throwing me off. So, um, okay, so we're gonna get started with the uh, simple outline. And you're gonna start from the center of the paper. So what I'm gonna do is make what I call a guide dot. And from this guide dot, you're gonna extend um, a simple wavy line going upward. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is go back to the guide dot and I'm going to kind of curve out and in. And you can see the line is somewhat wavy. This line's going to extend up a little bit higher than the one I just finished. And then it's going to curve, curve over. Okay. So now I'm going to go back to where this line finished and I'm going to extend that going further up um, at the same height of the line I just finished. Then what we're going to do is go to the point where that ended and then you're going to kind of come down, curve out, and out again. As you can see, the um, shape to the iris petals is pretty wavy. And then I'm going to leave that part open at the base of it. And I'm going to go back to where my guide dot is. And you can see I keep going back to my guide dot. And I'm curving out and kind of just taking a line going right up to that top part of the petal. I'm going 
and the guide dot again, and I'm gonna curve out. Now you can see the petals are overlapping quite a bit. I'm gonna come right up to where the other petals are, um, same height. And then I'm gonna go back to my guide dot and go right through the center of this part of my petal. So you can see they're overlapping each other. And one more section to my uh, flower is I'm gonna go just below that angle line and I'm gonna take a line out and curve in, take it out again, curve out again, and just do some soft curve lines. And then that connects to all of the lines where the guide dot started, okay? Now, I'm gonna go right next to the guide dot and I'm gonna kind of make like a very skinny V shape with an extended line down the center. And I'm gonna go over just a bit and curve out and out and again. And you can see it's nice and wavy. And then I'm going to finish off this bottom petal. And as you can see, all the lines, top and bottom, connect to each other. So I'm gonna do one more part to this flower. I'm gonna go right next to that side petal. I'm gonna curve out and then come down and make like a little curved line. I'm gonna go just above that where I had stopped so I can see that kind of fold under. And then I'm gonna to go to the edge of this and I'm gonna extend and make wavy lines to connect to that center petal that I've made first. I'm gonna to go to the other side. You can use your finger um, or your pencil to see where you're gonna start the other side of your last petal and you're going to come down to a point right over at the end kind of curve up and under under again and right into the side so actually my flower itself is finished now what i'm going to do is go to the bottom of the middle of this center petal and i'm going to now take a line it kind of curves at the bait or at the top of it and then extend down to the very bottom of my paper. Never leave a line um, just staying at, at the top. Okay, now I'm gonna do some very thin um, leaves. And you're not gonna go through your flower, you're gonna go around it and make sure these have a nice point to them. Go right to the flower petal and then extend your line and continue it on and then you're going to do the main vein right down the center of your leaf okay so you can see the um, stem isn't very thick or the leaves the leaves are kind of very slender and pointed at the end so i'm going to go right to my stock here my stem i'm going to do another And then I'm going to continue that line going higher than the other petal or the other leaf that I did. And then I'm going to take that down and take it all the way down to the bottom of my paper. And then I'm drawing a line down the center for the main vein. I'm gonna draw another one over here to the side. <clears throat> and I'm gonna finish this off by making the bloom over to the side of it. And you can add your bloom wherever you like and it has like a teardrop shape to it. And then I'm gonna go 
to the bottom of the teardrop and kind of do a soft wavy line. Oh, okay. He's drinking my water for my, um, <laughs> for my watercolor. So just don't mind my cat, Mookie. Okay, so now I've added my stem to the, um, the blossom, the bloom that's gonna open, and then I'm going to add a couple of leaves right around it. Make sure you come to a point, and then take that and go right past on the other side, and it comes right to the, the side of your your flower and then I'm going to add my main vein down the center and then one more leaf to finish this off. Okay now after you're done drawing your iris what you can do is hold down your paper and gently erase any pencil lines um, from your drawing and remember when you are doing your drawing, draw lightly. So that way when you do erase your pencil lines, you will not see um, any of the lines showing. And what I'm gonna do for this after I'm done is I'm just simply gonna paint my ba background and then we're gonna finish for the day, okay? So I've got my water that my cat is <laughs> drunk from. And I'm going to, um, you can actually find a color that you would like to use for your background, okay? And you can do your color in any color that you would like, um, except I would recommend that we not use blue, um, but you could add kind of like a, a yellow to your background. And I'll explain after we're, um, after, uh, as we continue this project into the following week. Okay, and then make sure you have a nice clean brush, and then you're just going to add your color around your iris. And you can mix different yellows, you can mix um, depending on how many that you've got in your palette. And then next week, we're gonna be using our oil pastels. So if you don't have oil pastels, you'll have a week to get your pastels. And then we'll be working in some pastel work um, over the next few weeks. So uh, oop, try not to get into your, your leaf or your flower. As you can see, as I'm painting my background, I'm being very gentle to my brush. You're not soaking the background too much. Um, lift your brush up so you're only using your the tip of the brush when you are uh, painting the very tight areas of your painting or your drawing. And make sure that you've colored or covered all of your background. So the background is the negative space around your drawing and the flower and leaves are the positive space in your composition. next week I should have a better lighting system 
since this one is the other one broke just before I started so things happen okay using the just the very tip of my brush and not pushing hard I'm able to get into the tight areas with my paint and just be mindful that you're not painting your leaves. It can be kind of tricky. Kind of just make a mental note where your leaves are. Because if you're not paying attention, it can easily happen. The thing about painting or doing any art whatsoever is that you need to be mindful and focus on what you're doing. the tip and get into those hard to reach spots and we'll be building color up in the background of this painting and use the similar paint strokes, brush strokes that then go used with our oil pastels. As you can see, when I do run out of the color, I dip my brush back into it. Sometimes I don't need to add more water. Sometimes I do. done. Okay. All right. So it's going to, I'm going to let it dry and then wash my brush and uh, make sure that you um, dry your brush standing upright in any container and don't leave your brush in the water. And so next week we're going to be using oil pastels. Okay. So Happy New Year, and I look forward to seeing you next week and continuing our Vincent van Gogh iris. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.